Alrighty, everybody. Thanks for stopping by and welcome back to our next video in our MPL Solaria 3 VPN section. So in this video, we're going to be hitting the very first bullet point here in the section, which is going to be IGP and LDP. And as you can tell, we're going to be using OSPF in order to accomplish all of this. So the first goal here is to lay out some groundwork, get the OSPF peerings up and running. We're going to be doing just a straight area zero everywhere. Very straightforward IGP config. And then we'll go through a couple of different ways to implement LDP, get it all up and running, and go from there. So without any further ado, let's dive into the config. And as I'm going through the configuration, I'll be walking you through some of the logic behind the commands and stuff like that, why you would need something somewhere and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get this party started, shall we? Now, to keep the configuration quick on the IGP part, because I'm not expecting... You to, at least right now in this set of videos, I'm not going to be spending much time at all covering why you need to type this particular command in here for OSPF. Um, if you don't know OSPF that well, uh, look at some of my older content or go look it up elsewhere to go learn a little bit more about OSPF. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that right now because, well, I have other... Uh, I, I just need an IGP to get some, uh, to propagate some information, really. That, that's it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get the, the configuration component started. So I'm going to use a pretty broad network statement. And because most of my network connectivity is one dot something, I'm going to be using a broad network statement. If I look at the oopsie, if we look at the show IP interface brief, you'll see that 1.0.0.0 should cover everything. And I should have a pretty consistent uh, OSPF config everywhere. So let's go ahead and get that party up and running. So we're going to go to global config, router OSPF, and we're going to make sure that we remember process 100, right? We're going to type the network command of 1.0.0.0.0.255.255.255 area 0 and then MPLS LDP auto config. Now I will pause for this because what does this command actually do? MPLS LDP auto config is a command that will, when, when configured underneath an IGP like OSPF or ISIS and only OSPF or ISIS because it, they are link state routing protocols. What's going to end up happening is every interface that's enabled for IGP will also be enabled for LDP. So that's a really big deal. So if you, let's say for instance, you're deploying uh, MPLS on a very large router like ASR9922 or ASR, or actually it won't work for that XR, an XR platform. Uh, an ASR1018, I might, might have the slot number size wrong. So maybe it's 16, maybe it's 12. I, I really don't remember. But you've got a very large chassis based switch or router that's you know like I'm using my entire camera space to do it we'll see you have a very large router with lots of line cards in it and your port density is very very high you know three four hundred ports I'm sure you don't want to configure MPLS IP in every interface uh, if you do hey that's okay you can do that I personally do not want to so therefore you can use the MPLS LDP auto config command and any interface that's enabled for LDP or IGP will also be enabled for LDP, which will bring up your LDP peerings up like that. So that is why I use that command. So now I get to go type in do show history. I get to take this command right here and I'm going to go over to CSR6 and CSR5 and configure these guys real quick. I'm not going to do... I'm not going to configure routers 2 and 3 right this moment because I want to show you some other variations. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this command here and on CSR6, same thing. I'm going to go ahead and get them configured so they'll form an adjacency here momentarily. Now let me fall back to CSR2. Now when it comes to configuring MPLS on a router that doesn't support MPLS LDP auto config or maybe you don't want to, maybe you only have um, a router that only has a couple of interfaces. So or you don't know about the LDP auto config. Let's let's go with that one. What you can do is you can actually type in here underneath interface gig one, you can type in the IP OSPF one or one hundred area zero command, right? And then you can type in the and there we formed an adjacency with, with router one and process one, right? We can type in MPLS IP as well. And then we should form momentarily. We should form, but we actually won't form an um, we won't form an MPLS peering with router one. Any ideas as to why? Well, I haven't covered 
the core MPLS videos yet. But what needs to end up happening is I actually have to go to interface loopback zero and enable the OSPF process on there because the LDP process is loopback to loopback unless I change the transport interface on the router to be a different interface. But that's more specific to other use cases that we'll be take, taking a look at in the future. Let me go ahead and just enable OSPF on the loopback. The loopback will get advertised to router one and here in a moment, we should have an adjacency to CSR1 pop up, and we do. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to actually type in interface range. I'm going to type in gig 2 through 6. I'm going to type in IP OSPF 100 area 0, and then MPLS IP. Okay, that's going to be configured on all the other interfaces. And then as I go along and get everything else configured, that's going to be the way we go about doing it. So now I get to go to uh, CSR32. Let me go ahead and get him configured real quick. I'm just going to drop this config in like so. And we will form a peering here momentarily with uh, CSR2. And then as well as I'll go over to CSR3. and get him squared away. And then CSR2, we should begin to form peerings with other routers. Let me go do CSR4 as well. And get all that squared away. So now we should have peerings coming up and become running and we'll be in good shape from there. So then we're gonna have all that, which is awesome. Now I've done all the iOS boxes. Now I have to go focus on the XR boxes. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Let me go over to XR9. Go ahead and log into him. Go to global config. I'm going to type in, I'm going to, I'm going to configure OSPF and MPLS can separately on XR9. So I'm going to type in router OSPF 100 area 0. I'm going to type in interface gig 00000 and then gig 001 and then interface loopback 0. All that good stuff. We're going to have all of them configured appropriately. I'll exit out of here. I'll type in log adjacency changes. And then I'm going to um, an exit out of OSPF. I'll type in MPLS LDP. I will type in interface gig 0000 and gig 001 and get all that squared away. So if I do a, and actually I should, let me come out of here and type in router ID is going to be 1.1.1.9. So if I do a show config, the syntax is actually pretty straightforward. We can see that OSPF is enabled on all the interfaces that we need to point to other routers. And XRV9 is over here in the lower left-hand corner, right here. And then we have the rest of the configuration is in place as well. And we have the router ID and then the two interfaces that are up for MPLS. And actually, let me type in log neighbor log neighbor and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, let me exit out here and type in logging con debug. I don't know if I've actually typed that command in yet. Let me go ahead and commit that config. So after a moment or so here we should begin to see peering start to pop up and we'll start to form uh, OSPF adjacencies and momentarily we'll start to see LDP peering start to pop up and all that good stuff which there they are. The LDP peerings are starting to pop up which is what we expect to see one to router three, one to router two, right here, which is what we want. So that's all good and that's all squared away. So now I'm gonna to go to XR10 and I'm going to do the LDP auto config variation. Go ahead and log in. Router OSPF 100, area zero, MPLS LDP auto config, and then interface Gig 0000, gig 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, interface loopback 0. And then we're going to have to jump out of, uh, let me do this, log neighbor adjacency changes, exit out here, MPLS LDP. Uh, router ID is going to be 1.1.1.10. And then log neighbor, and then we're going to exit out. 
So if we do a quick show config, we're going to see that we have all the interfaces that are enabled for OSPF, and then we have the interface or the LDP process that's enabled. If we don't enable, if we're going to use the LDP auto config command under XR, we need to make sure that the LDP process is enabled globally. If we don't, that's going to be a problem. So the MPLS process will never come online. Also, the router ID command here, not required. I'm just throwing that in there because I'm trying to get in the habit of doing that. So I figure, you know what? Why not start now, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to commit this config. And that will come online here momentarily. And that'll be that config. So actually, let me go login con debug. There we go. So now I'm going to go to XR11 and do the exact same thing. Go ahead and log in. And we're going to type in uh, router OSPF 100 area 0 and the interface gig 0000, gig 1, gig 2, and gig 3, interface loopback 0. And exit out of here, type in um, MPLS LDP autoconfig, and then the log adjacency changes, exit out. Uh, MPLS LDP log neighbor router ID is going to be 1.1.1.11 and show config. Now what I'm doing with MPLS here is you'll notice that MPLS is actually put up a level higher. So here, oops, I am saying I don't care what area the interface is sit in. I want to enable MPLS on every area that this router is going to be running in. This is a great idea if you're going to be running uh, area uh, XR11 as an area border router, which we probably will be in the future, but that'll come in at a later date and time. But just know I want you to take note of that command, and then we have the other commands as well squared away. Let me go ahead and commit these commands. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, actually I probably need to do the log, the log neighbor log con debug. Oops. There we are. So we're going to start to see adjacencies pop up. Now, what I really want to focus on now is going to be the, the next step of the details. We need to start going through and validating some of the other configurations and stuff like that. So we go ahead and um, go back to CSR1. And here we have two adjacencies popped up, right? We do a show um, IP OSPF neighbors. We have two adjacencies, one to router 3, one to router 2. And if we look at the show IP or show MPLS forwarding table, we're going to have a bunch of label values starting to propagate, which is what we want to have, right? We want to have a bunch of labels. So now that we have all this stuff squared away and we have all of our configuration in place and we have the MPLS, we have the LDP, or I should say the LFIB is populated. That's actually a really good step because now we have all the configuration in place that we need to have and stuff like that. So now what we can go and do from CSR1's perspective is we can go through the process of validating what's happening here. So I want to go ahead and do a show IP route. So what I want to do now is I want to walk you guys through how do you validate that the LDP forwarding table is actually going to work. That's actually what I want to go through to do now. And so we're going to do a step-by-step -step recursion process in order to figure out you know, how do you map different things to different capabilities so that you understand what's happening. I'm going to do a show IP route for, in this particular case, it's going to be 1.1.1. I believe that is CSR6. So let's go ahead and bring this down. We'll do 6. So here we have 1.1.1.6 is a known route in the routing table. It's known via OSPF. I have two different capabilities of getting there. I can go out towards router 3 or I can go out towards router 2. All that is really good. So now that I have a route in the routing table, I should be able to do a show IP Ceph of 1.1.1.6, right? And I do. I do have two entries in the forwarding table. So this is my layer three reachability. This is my control plane, but this is my forwarding plane. This is going to be the actual transiting capability of CSR1 to forward data plane traffic towards CSR2 and CSR3. Now, notice how I have labels 23 and 27. Those are my outgoing labels. If I was to do a show, show Ceph, or is it internal? Yes, internal is right here. So I'm going to go take a look at this. Now, what we're going to have, let me scroll back up to the top here, is we're going to have 
this capability set, we have two outgoing interfaces, right? We have we have the local label, which is a label 31. If we scroll up to here and we look at label 31, we can see that's this value right here. Now, if we come down here a little bit further, we can see that there's going to be two egress interfaces. Okay, we can see that based off of this output as well. We have gig one and gig two, and it's per the our flows are per destination. And if we come down here a little further, we have this information right here is what we care about. MPL short path extensions. We have label 23 and we have label 27. So what's going to end up happening is on a per flow basis, there's 16 hash buckets. We have the first packet will be sent out 23, then 27, then 23, then 27. It's going to oscillate back and forth across the entire path. So that means that as we're going through and configuring and getting tr trying to do load balancing and stuff like that, that's going to be how this is handled. So you, load balancing is in place. So that means that I should be able to do a trace route for to 1.1.1.6 sourcing from loopback loopback zero numerically, and I should be able to load balance. Guess what I'm doing? I'm load balancing. Well, you guys can't see my hand because it's cut off, but um, we are load balancing right here. Here's load balancing. Right here we have load balancing, so on and so forth. Now what's cool about this whole setup, if we look at this a little bit more in detail, you'll notice that right here we have the 1.5.6 peering. That's CSR5 to CSR6. But notice there's no label value associated right here like there is in the above output. Let's take a look at that a little more closely. Let's look at CSR5 because that's who that owns that route. We'll do a show IP route of 1.1.1.6. All right, we know it. We have a, a connection to it. If we do a show IP Ceph to 1.1.1.6, you'll notice that when we look at the next top is going to be towards router 6 out gig, uh, gigabit Ethernet 4, there's no additional information past it, right? Well, why is that? If we were to go do this internal look, we're not going to be using MPLS to forward the path, right? Notice how it's MPL short path extensions. Now at the end it says label implicit null. If we do a show MPLS forwarding path, forwarding table for that particular path, what you're going to see, we just do 1.1.1.6 slash 32. You'll notice that here it's got local label of 16. And it's got pop label going out. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the PHP process. It's saying pull the top label out. What is the top label? The LVP label. What allocated all these labels in our routing, in our LFIB and pop, propagated them throughout the rest of the network? LDP. So because we have that capability in place and everything's working the way that it needs to be, we have the pop label coming into play, which is saying, I want you to remove the top label, which is why when we go back to CSR1, we have no label value for hop number four because LDP isn't forwarding the traffic. It's being forwarded from R5 out gig 4 right here towards CSR6 via native IP. Okay? That's the one thing you really need to understand about this whole process. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the breakdown. There's really no other way of doing it. I'm sure you can probably come up with three or four of them if you'd like. But this is what we really need to understand. You're combining OSPF with LDP or ISIS with LDP. Now, can you, do you have to use those two protocols? No, you can use EIGRP and RIP or static routes if you'd like. I don't know why you would, but you could. How would you implement MPLS then? With the MPLS IP command. That's how you would do that. If you're not using a link state routing protocol like OSPF or ISIS, then you must use the MPLS IP command because there are no extensions in the IGP for EIGRP RIP or static routing to allow the propagation of the information through the dynamic routing protocol. So with that being said, everybody, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video. And until next time, guys, take it easy.